Hi there, Dawn McVeigh here. This next challenge is all about mixing and matching colors to create some really unique color combinations. I've got a few tips and tricks for you that will hopefully help you to put together some really unique color combos of your own. Okay, so let's get started. Today's challenge is to come up with some really unique color combos. Um, and I thought I would just walk you through my thought process as I select a couple of color combos to work with today and um, just give you a few tips on how I go about putting together some interesting color combinations. I think we all have our favorite colors that we like to work with, that we gravitate to, and today is all about stepping outside of our box a little bit and pulling in some colors that we perhaps don't really use all that often. So as you can see, I've got all of paper trays, um, cardstock laid out in front of me here. Um, I think a really great way to get yourself started to selecting a, a really interesting color combo is you can go one of two ways. Today I thought I would show you both ways. One is to pick a color that you really love, a color that you use all the time, and build a really interesting color combination around that. Another is to take a color that you rarely use, perhaps one that you don't even really like that much, and challenge yourself to build a really unique color combination around it that might um, make you actually like the color, make you want to use it. So for today, I am going to select, this will come as no surprise, Raspberry Fizz as a color that I love. I use this color all the time, and goodness, I've used it in a million different combinations, so we'll see what we come up with today. Um, and then a color that I rarely use would probably be Spring Rain. Reason being, I don't use a lot of pastels just in general, and I rarely use blues. Um, it's just not really my thing. I do use a lot of like green blue, so turquoises and teals, I use that a lot, but just straight blue blue, um, I don't really use all that often, so this will be a good challenge for me. Um, something to keep in mind when putting together your color combinations. You want to think in terms a little bit of whether or not your color is a really blue-based color or a yellow-based color. Is it a warm or a cool tone? Um, both of these are very cool tones. Um, think about it in terms of like gray. There's a lot of different grays. But if you think about like gray in home decor, there could be a gray that's very blue-gray. Or there could be a gray that's a very taupe um, almost a brownish gray, and that would be a warm tone versus a cool tone. They're all still gray. They're all still versions of gray, but this is not a hard and fast rule, but if you just keep in mind that cool tones are generally going to play together a little easier and warm tones will play together a little easier, it will put it will make it easier for you when putting together these color combinations and wondering, does this really look okay or does it not? Because um, ultimately, you can make it, you know, you could pick as many random colors as you wanted and call it a unique color combo but the goal obviously is to make it really pretty and pleasing to the eye and something that you want to work with because you like it so let's get started first with raspberry fizz um again having all the colors just laid out in front of me here makes it really easy to just go one by one and hold them up and see if i like them together and i have to say i already am really liking these three colors together this you wouldn't necessarily think to put these two in particular together. This one, uh, Melonberry, is a little bit warm um, compared to Raspberry Fizz. It definitely is a little bit of more of a warm tone, but by mixing that Berry Sorbet in, um, it kind of works. They all, uh, these two are certainly evenly matched in terms of um, boldness and color intensity and whatnot. And then uh, the Melonberry gives you a little bit of a lighter balance um, that is not terrible, but I don't love it. Oh, now see how cool that looks? These are colors that, like I might have used these three together before, but I would not ever think to put these two together. This is Autumn Rose, which is a cool tone, and, um, Melonberry, which definitely does read a bit more warm, and you see the, see that clearly when you put these two together, I don't love these two together. But when you put these two in with them and you separate these two, look what a pretty and pleasing palette that is 
overall. So what I will do when I make my card is I'll just be very selective about where these two colors in particular are placed. Um, I may not, you know, like if I was using flowers, for instance, these two flowers, if I had one of each, may not be right next to each other. I'd have these guys positioned in between them or something, but I really like that one. Um, moving on to our spring rain. This is nice. This is actually really interesting, but it's super boring. <laughs> oh my goodness, but I kind of want my... Oh no, see? Berry Sorbet just makes everything look better, doesn't it? I don't love the blue and the... Um... Oh, what is this one? Scarlet Jewel. I don't love them right next to each other. But look how fun that is when the berry sorbet breaks it up a little bit. I really like that. They're all cool tones that will look really, really pretty together. I'm very happy with that one. Um, just for uh, argument's sake, in the event that there was something else that we would like better, let's move on down the list here. Definitely don't like the oranges with that blue just because they're not the right tone of orange. They're all very, um, very warm toned, and this is very cool. You can have such a thing as a, you know, a cooler orange, but those weren't it. Using blues obviously would work really well, but it's super obvious, and we're trying to come up with something really unique today. I will say these work well together. They're, it's a very cool, purple as is this one winter wisteria this plum pudding is a much warmer purple tone therefore it doesn't play quite as well with these two cools as the winter wisteria does again it's not a hard and fast rule but just something to keep in mind that will hopefully help you as you're putting your color combos together I'm really really pleased with what we went with uh, what we selected for the spring rain, so I think we're gonna go with this. Okay, so for this first card, let's go ahead and start with the spring rain color combo. For the sake of time, I know you guys may be uh, kind of in a rush today to watch these videos, so I tried to speed this process up as much as I could, but I did wanna give you a couple of little um, water coloring um, tips, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but um, recently I got these um, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers that everybody's buzzing about, and oh my lordy bees, I have been having a ton of fun with them. So um, I recently, you know, when you get a new toy that's super fun, you show your friend, right, because she might want to buy a super fun new toy too. <laughs> so I had a little marker playtime uh, session with a friend the other day, and we had so much fun. And I created a bunch of flowers, which I will show you in just a minute, as well as a bunch of just watercolored um, backgrounds, which are going to be so handy to use on cards. They're just, they're already ready to go. Look how pretty that is and how many different, like, different colors are created. And I just used three markers to do that and then added water. When you add water, that's when the magic happens. So um, for today, if you recall, we decided on... Uh, Spring Rain, Sweet Blush, Berry Sorbet, and Scarlet Jewel. And I've gone ahead and kind of laid out how I want this card to be when it's all put together. I went ahead and die cut and stamped some uh, bloomers, flowers. This is two layers. I left the back layer plain because most of it I knew I was going to cover up with the top layer. The top layer I stamped with a Berry Sorbet solid flower. And then two of the detail stamps I stamped with uh, Scarlet Jewel ink. Then I die cut some um, vintage linens, flower, these these are the leaves from the vintage linens flower set, and went ahead and stamped those with just Versamark ink. I didn't want to make it extremely dark, dark by adding the actual ink color, so I went with Versamark, and then I've got, um, I've, I'm placing everything here so I can see kind of how I want my watercolor to go because I'm going to watercolor on this watercolor cardstock. I'm just going to do a bit in this bottom right corner. 
So I went ahead and stamped the sentiment. This is another from Vintage Linens so that I would have it already placed so that I don't get any watercolor up in that uh, area. Let me just show you quickly a couple of uh, things with these markers. The ones that I have selected that coordinate really well with the, this color combo, this one's called Pale Pink. And there you can see the comparison between the two. Obviously, it's a little more tan. It's a more warm tone, whereas this pink is um, a little more cool. But it's close enough. When, once we watercolor, it'll be fine. And this one is... Uh, called light carmine that's actually really similar to berry sorbet and then I don't have in this in this pack of 48 colors I don't actually have a color that's really similar to um, Scarlet Jewel but the nice thing is with the watercolor you can mix and match colors to create your own really easily I mean this took me I don't know three minutes to figure out that these would work so what I did is I I'm gonna take some wine red and then some dark gray right over the top and then I just want you to see what happens so then I've got just a little water brush you can see how it softens the uh, color and I've got a paper towel here you can see how it blends between those two really really well but when I go over the berry sorbet color and that um Oh, whatever it was called. Dark gray. The result, as you can see, is a color that's kind of similar to the um, Scarlet Jewel. So it will work great for purposes of this card. So that being said, I'm just going to uh, keep in mind I want to be in this lower right-hand corner. I want the lighter colors up toward the top, and I'm just literally scribbling it on there's no like rhyme or reason like it doesn't have to be fancy or neat then I want this color to be the one like along the bottom super sloppy right you can totally do this because it doesn't have to be really precise you want to make sure you come in with a clean water brush to start out and then you're just going to go over that. And rather than, like I was coloring it on in lines, this time you're just going to use that water to push the color. you see it a little better on this one. It's in lines right now. But we want to soften those lines with the water. Let's see what amazing things happen when you... Add the water to it. I'm going to clean my brush again because I don't want to drag too much of this dark color up onto that berry color. You want to keep it kind of intact. You're just pushing the color with the water. It's really easy. And that is it. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll put the card together. Okay, so the watercolor cardstock is dry and I went ahead and popped everything together. Um, as you can see, we've worked that berry sorbet color in. The um, sweet blush is mirrored up here. And then this, uh, you know, scarlet jewel toned watercolor down at the bottom. Um, so that is it for that first card and then for the second one um, I went ahead and put it all together but it's a lot of the same principles um, I used another one of those watercolored cardstock panels and some of those flowers uh, I was telling you about from the vintage linens stamp set uh, I heat embossed these with either white or gold embossing powder and then just put a little color in a lot of cases a little color just around the center and then I just use the water brush to push that ink to push the uh, marker ink out over the whole um, flower in some cases I added multiple colors uh, of watercolor or of the marker ink and then went over it all with the um, 
water brush. You just want to be careful to keep your um, water brush. Well, it just depends. If you if you want to blend all the color together, blend it all together. But in some cases like this, I didn't touch the turquoise color in the center very much with water brush because ultimately I wanted to keep that and I didn't want it to blend in with the green too much. But you'll see what I mean once you start playing with it. It's lots and lots of fun. So I used two of those flowers here and um, I remember this was the color combo where we had um, melon berry, uh, berry sorbet, raspberry fizz, which we've got a lot of down here, and then autumn rose. Uh, for the autumn rose, I used the, where is it, embroidered borders hex die and stamp set to create this border. And I will say that I stamped it in Versamark ink, uh, and I did that on purpose to keep it a little bit lighter. I didn't want it, that color to get too much darker, because then it would start to look more um, Scarlet Jewel-ish. So, again, you have options when you're, when you're playing with your colors um, as to how dark you want to make things and and your placement too. I could have stamped this sentiment in any color but I chose to stamp it in the melon berry to help reiterate what we only had a little bit of down here. So um, I hope that gives you some inspiration and I cannot wait to see the unique color combos you come up with. Mixing and matching colors is so much fun and I'm really excited to see your take on this particular challenge. Have a great time. Hopefully I've given you some helpful tips that will assist you in putting together some really unique color combos of your own. Enjoy!